With us now is a person that has a really cool name. It is, I'm like, I'm like, look at her and I'm like, <laughs> that's so pretty. Um, it is Victoria Miranda Esquire. Uh, hello, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Thank you for having me. You're welcome. A lot of times people come in about my name, they're like, Donna Drake. And I'm like, yeah, that's my real name. But this is your real name. This is my real name. I kept my my born last name. I did not take my husband's name, which was a source of contention a little okay. bit. But you, know. but you said, but it's the way that the A's flow at the right? end. It's just right? perfect. Victoria it flows. Miranda, right? It's like that up. <laughs> Hey. Yeah. Um, so now we are talking about people that don't have such a loving relationship. Yes. Divorce, the big D. Mm -hmm. Okay. What made you decide to grow up and become an attorney, especially in that field, in the matrimonial field? So it's pretty funny because I had a very unconventional road to you becoming did. a lawyer. What I did. did. How'd you go? Um, so I actually went to college for music therapy. Totally different. Um, and I hated it. My parents tried to talk me out of it. I was dead set, went to college freshman year. I was miserable. So I went to career services. I took one of those aptitude tests and it basically said, you can be a lawyer or be in political science, but you should not do anything where you have to like nurture and care for people. And I was like, I think I'm a caring person. <laughs> <laughs> but that got me into political science. And then when you graduate, what do you really do? So I went to law school and I said I was never going to become a divorce attorney. <laughs> and uh, there you go. There we are. <laughs> I was going to say, your, your plans seem to be like ever changing yes, for you. Yes, they were. I guess the universe has another idea for you. I think it did. Yeah. What when I looked at the card and it said uh, DCPP, mm -hmm. what did those initials stand for in New Jersey? Because this whole this show airs in the tri-state area yes. as well as in 25 countries um, and across the United States now too. But those acronyms mean something different. What does that mean? Do. So DCPP is the Division of Child Protection and Permanency. And I think nationwide people think of um, Child Protective Services, CPS, um, and that is CPS in New Jersey. Okay. Um, so they are tasked with um, what they say is the protection and safety of children. Divorce can be ugly, especially when there's children and sometimes even pets. Yes. I don't even know if pets have their own division, right, of <laughs> you know, protective services. But yes. it seems like those are the things that people fight over more than anything, even the money. They don't care. They're just like, oh, nah, 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 right? It's bad. It, it is in some, bad. In some families. It's unfortunate. Um, that you do see children almost become a pawn, I think, in divorces. Um, and pets too, there are certain things called pup nups, which is a prenup for your pets, which blew my mind when okay. I heard about it. Um, but I do see a lot of parents trying to almost weaponize the division against the other parent to almost get a leg up in a divorce, which is so sad on so many levels because really the only person that hurts is your children. Um, but I think when you're going through that, you don't really see the bigger picture because you're so focused on the hurt that you're feeling, um, that you don't really think what it'll do to your children. And so as an attorney, what you try to do, I guess, is to have conversations with your clients yes. to strategize with them, to like kind of take as much drama out of it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because drama can be costly. It can be very costly. And you know, at first, people aren't looking at the dollar signs, so to say, when they're getting divorced. But the more fighting there is, the more motion practice there may be, that bill keeps going up. And, you know, sometimes you have to have that hard conversation with your client and say, listen, we can keep filing motions and spend all your money, or you can actually have a college fund for your child. Um, You're right. The choice is theirs. Exactly. At that point. Exactly. There's something, a term that I was not familiar with, and it says not established finding. Yes. What does that term mean? So Victoria? when the division gets involved, they by law have to investigate whenever a referral is made. Um, and they have four tiers of findings when they investigate a parent for abuse and neglect. Um, the highest substantiated means there was abuse and neglect and there were aggravating factors. The second is established, which is there was abuse or neglect, but there were mitigating factors. And the third, which I see as a catch-all, is not established, which means there was no abuse or neglect, but you harmed or placed your child at risk of harm. 
And what we saw and our fight for many years was we saw the division kind of just using this when nothing really happened, but they didn't want to say nothing happened. Oh, because they, they were covering their own butt. They were, and then they retain your records forever. Wow. So it can come back and, and hurt you in the end. Um, so I fought that for many years with um, Allison, who is the owner of the Williams Law Group. Um, and we finally got it all the way up to the Supreme Court, who heard the arguments on, you know, whether parents actually had due process in this fight. Good for you. It How did that great. feel? It was terrifying. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> uh, we're preparing for the Supreme Court. And uh, so, so when the ruling came, what was that? What did that change for you? So it definitely gave parents in New Jersey a much better, bigger platform. Okay. So, you know, it used to be that the division made this decision internally and you just got a notice. It didn't explain what your rights were. It didn't explain that you could do anything about it. And now before they even make that decision, the parent actually has the right to provide their own evidence, rebut their findings, um, and they can fight it a little harder um, before that decision is made. And then they still have appeal rights if the division chooses to keep it. Um, it was a, a small step, but a, a huge victory, definitely. Sometimes children do not want visitation with the other parent. Let's talk about that, because that also plays into it. It does, and you know, I think that's one of the hardest things that we deal with, honestly, because you know, sometimes children are being almost brainwashed, right, by one parent or the other, and that kind of drives what they're saying about visitation. And other times, you know, especially when we're talking about older children, they don't want to do every other weekend. They want to be with their friends or, you know, they, they want to start having their own life. And what I always tell my clients is if you can co-parent, that is the best option for your children where you can be flexible and make sure that relationship is strong with both of you. Um, but that's not always the case, as I'm sure you know. And when it comes to a parent just saying, I don't want to send them, they're saying they don't want to go, and we're talking about younger children, I always advise my clients, you know, you have to abide by whatever agreement is in place. If your kids don't want to go, try to, you know, make sure that they know they're going to have fun with their other parent and they're going to have a great weekend and encourage them to spend that time. Um, but ultimately, I see that a lot, and that's why we wind up you know, end up back in court. Because the kids are just kind of like not happy. No, right. no. And the older they get, you know, the court is more reluctant to force the issue, you know, especially with, I would say 16, 17 year olds, you know, they're pretty <laughs> strong in their opinions. And how do you force a child to do something they don't want to do when they're that old already? Um, which is why I think it's so important to really be on the same page. You know, it's interesting, they they often say we all have a book in us, right? And I feel like I have successfully blended families over and over and over again, and mm -hmm. I have the best kids, but I've also seen other families do it well. Yes. Maybe there needs to be a book on, hey, you know what? You don't wanna be married to that person anymore, exactly. but you can still have the most amazing children exactly. as if they grew up in one household. Yes. Like cohesive rules, mm -hmm. you know, um, opportunities for them, yeah. you know, don't make them feel guilty if they're going to have fun at the other parents. Um, and also like, don't have one parent try to outspend the other, right? No. It's like, oh. oh, they all went to this place exactly. and that place and this place and the other place. And the other parents like, okay, well, here's one pack of Pokemon cards. You know what exactly. I'm saying? It's got to be some kind of shared. You know, I, in a perfect world, I think all families would be like that. And you know, it's more and more common that we're seeing blended families these days, but in reality, I think the hurt feelings don't go away as easily and it takes time to heal from, you know, your own experience, which does impact your children, whether you're seeing it or not. Um, and, you know, that's why I have a job, right? To help people navigate through that experience. And you have a team approach also at your group, we do. which is fantastic. So let's talk about that too. So uh, Williams Law Group mm -hmm. has this like, I don't know, really cool vibe there, right? <laughs> like do. they're in good hands. Like your clients are in very good hands. <laughs> yes, and we worked very hard to get that vibe. Um, it took a long time 
So the firm opened in August of 2013, and I joined the firm in February of 2014. Um, and you know, it took us a long time to figure out where we wanted the firm to go in growth. Um, but we have such an amazing team. And even with the pandemic and people working from home, that definitely changes dynamics. But you know, people hop on the phone, they ask each other questions. We definitely approach everything as a team, which I think really benefits the clients because I agree. they don't just get one person's point of view, they have a whole team. I love that. Thank you very much, Victoria Miranda Esquire. Yes. <laughs> um, come back anytime, and it was a joy. I hope you had fun here today. Yes, it was great. You? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Stay tuned. We've been living it up. And if you're going through a divorce, or if you're an adult child and you're going through a divorce, but you were, you know, your parents were divorced, it could cause up all kinds of issues for you. Just reach out to them. You know, talk about your issues, talk about your challenges, and I'm sure they're going to find a resolution that'll work for you. Be well.